Hello guys and welcome to a new Stir Division 2 video today by me Vulcan. In this one I have for you a 10 versus 10 on Narach Lake and we're going to be playing with the first airborne task force with the balanced deployment type. This was an awesome 10 v 10 not just because it's a 10 v 10 but also because of Ra Endymion start over here an amphibious start with the first SSB he's decided to bring in two of these Sherman 5 DDs you can see they're using their propellers there in the water very very cool we've got the commandos coming in these ducks on the left hand side here as well two commando threes a commando 45 commando leader and the commando sniper so those are slowly and secretly moving around the edge of the map if they get spotted it's going to be very very bad so i was kind of hoping and praying for him this entire time because if even a, a plane comes in and strafes these it will force unload them and all the commandos will drown the shermans would be okay if they got strafed but they're incredibly vulnerable to being bombed and uh, clustered just because there's no aa uh, that is accompanying them on the water and yeah it would be entirely down to fighters in order to protect them i'm also going to be deploying on the left hand side here so we're going to be doing our best to support this amphibious landing when it comes in uh, but to begin with i'm going to be going with some forceman scouts we've got the six pounders deploying and a couple of citron harsh kisses for aa we've got the airborne paras here also following up as well as two 107mm mortars on the back side. These mortars, they're going to be super important because they can provide the magical thing called smoke. And that is going to be vital in order to protect and conceal the forces coming in from the water here as they approach. So I was solely focused on getting the mortars online and ready to help out whilst continuing to make as much ground as possible so that we can closely support this push when it comes in. <laughs> if we're not there, uh, we're not coming in from this side at the same time as he's coming in from here, then anything on the shore can just freely shoot him and you have the same problem. All of the commandos will get unloaded in the water and then they'll just die. Sherman 5 should be okay though. Anyway, unfortunately one of my citron archers is going to get taken out but trying to sneak forwards the six pounder to engage the two three three here as it's currently chunking my hero unit here prince do manage to take it out before prince dies so that's good and uh, the abu paras now finally getting further up i've also got one in this light cover on the right hand side just to cover us off there uh, but the mortars are going to be starting to fire away. We really need to start pinning down and dealing with some of the infantry in this town. And Ra Endymion over here has really got to hope that there is not a recon unit in this church. Because if there is, that's going to definitely see him coming. But so far, no reaction, no planes, no nothing on this left-hand side. And that's a good thing. The longer that goes on, the better because it means that less players are going to have resources to spend on those aircraft. If this had been spotted in like the second minute of the game, for example, everybody would have just bought a plane and then this would just be over. But for now, it's still working. He's still managing to get quite far up on the left-hand side. Obviously, the front line is kind of telling, but honestly, who, who really expects this unless you actually see it? <laughs> so, like, from their perspective, they're just like, oh, he's probably got a unit on the corner here, so it's pushing the front line. Uh, but when they actually see this coming, it'll be a different story entirely. Anyway, AB Power is trying to force back the wave of Sturmschützen. Look at that. That's a lot of Sturmschutz and a lot of MP44s. Probably, like, the entire stock of the German MP44s. But, yeah. AB Paras able to engage with their Lien fields. Uh, since the latest DLC, the AB Paras did get upgraded with Lien fields. So that's the same in the 6th Airborne as well. 6 pounder trying to get the kill onto the Gepards here, but the Valkyr have found it. AB Paras on the left did at least pin down the Sturmgrenz. 
the the great thing about the airborne powders is as enemies come towards you you're firing a sniper at them the entire time and you're slowly like starting to pin them and then by the time they get into range to shoot you with a machine gun you you're already at an advantage and because they're slightly pinned they're less accurate and you're still fully accurate so you only like capitalize on that initial sort of stress that you've already done which makes them incredibly good at range so you can see here right under me on he has finally turned he is going to be heading toward the shore Look at that, that's actually a really, really, really cool view. All of the smoke piles in the distance as the DD units move in and the ducks. Very, very cool indeed. My mortars are going to be smashing this area. I was trying to kill off the AT gun that we saw there. Sherman 5's killing off the Gepard, super important. Again, could fire at and kill these commander units but my smoke is landing it was already in the air once yet before he asked because i know how important it is for this smoke to be in position i'm also going to be investing into a hellcat now that this push has been seen it's very likely that the enemy are going to try and shut it down sbw233 does manage to hit one of the commandos in the water two of the commandos in the water they're going to be sinking down, but two have made it. The commando number three, commando 45, who lost the commando leader. The Sherman 5 taking a side shot there from the 233. Not going to be helpful, but he's managed to get on ground. And up from the beach he goes. <laughs> Absolutely awesome. The fact that he actually made it on this map is is something else. Like, it's quite easy to go across a little lake like this in the game. But in order to get all the way around the left side of the map without being spotted and manage to get on ground without dying is quite an achievement. Anyway, since my Hellcat is already here, it's going to come in for support. As the Sherman 5s are landing through the smoke they're gonna get up onto the onto the shore there although well, currently just engaging the back 40 my mortifier is keeping things pinned down so that he can continue to make ground and he's managed to capture the flag which is exactly what he needs to do the J87 struggling to find the cluster strike onto the Sherman 5s because of the smoke as well. So everything really, really coming together here. We didn't manage to make much ground, unfortunately, but we certainly put a lot of pain into the Sturmschützen and Sturmgrenadiers from a distance with the airborne powders. Also, my six panel was, of course, picking stuff off. But yeah, great push in here. It's going to allow him to take care of the extra reinforcements that are going to be coming this way and it really just keeps them out of this strong point. I was actually really surprised that there wasn't a recon unit in the church. I mean, well, I wasn't really surprised. I was surprised they didn't put one in earlier. <laughs> Obviously it wasn't surprising that there was one in there in the first place because we knew there wasn't. Otherwise <laughs> his entire push probably would have been destroyed. But alas, sea fire coming over, providing plenty of recon as it goes and shoots down the JU-87D5. And my mortars are continuing to fire pretty much the entire time. You can see they're down to five HE shells each. All of the smoke's used up. I did bring in a fourth mortar back there, but time to bring in the infantry to capitalize on the initial position here of Endymion. He did end up losing one of his M4s to the cluster strike. All these commandos do is need a hold. He has let his commando sniper in the church fire so that he can get some damage onto the Sturmgrenz. But my AB Paras, they're going to try and get through. See, I'm unloading them really quite far up. Avkada Panzer III wasn't aiming at the transport, so I decided to just go all the way through. Since these are pinned down, that's going to be a surrender onto the Big Light Pioneer, which is actually a really, really nice kill. And the Sturmschutzen swiftly following as they get killed off. All the snipers from the AB Palas massively helping in this engagement whilst we got more mortar fire coming down. So just a really, really nice supported push on this left hand side has allowed us to seize the enemy flag. Hellcat now coming in 
from Yagsource. Boston's coming in from Nathan. We're just going to continue to double down on this left side and try and take the second flag here. Our teammates done well to get through the little town here that often gets bogged down quite quickly and on this right hand side the aggression further up has allowed us to secure this flag we're currently sitting at 18-8 on this map a very very successful start <laughs> partly due to that endymion's amphibious strike which honestly absolutely awesome really not something you see very often on this map and when you do it usually fails so we've got an absolutely <laughs> wondrous scenario here and now we've got uh, the Americans coming in with all the M8 Scots the converted gunners and the Mion's trying to get some more commandos up to help him out no longer using the amphibious nature of his division uh, but uh, the last of the commandos and they're going down. The Sherman 5 taken out. And uh, what a glorious amphibious push it was. Has allowed us to pretty much secure the town. At least <laughs> semi-secure. <laughs> Obviously we don't have any troops left in the town. But uh, we are swiftly replacing them. And we did manage to focus on this flag. Whilst the reinforcements were being held up. By Ram Endymion's troops. So very very successful amphibious attack and exactly the way I guess the amphibious operations would have likely taken place so <laughs> that's also very cool but the Valka struggling at close range versus the commandos AB Power is also doing plenty of damage and we're just going to continue to reinforce this left hand side I've got the forcemen coming up to plug the gaps uh, all my mortars are supplied by the jeeps uh, so I'll be getting them firing away again. These 107 mils are actually really nice because they do have 5.35 damage. So can even kill like tanks quite effectively. And since they have radio, they can also exploit that in order to be a lot more accurate. Which can be very, very devastating, particularly in areas like this, for example, where there is both infantry and armor next to one another, you end up doing quite a lot of damage. You might not kill the tanks, but you will certainly damage them whilst also pinning the infantry, and that sort of strike can be extremely effective and allow me, for example, to just push all the way through with the forcemen should they be pinned down. At the moment, the modifier not coming down, but that's a theory. See it theoretical. Forcemen will soon be in position and they'll be very very difficult for Greasy here to deal with. The Sturmgren's already suffering at range against the AV Paras. So here come the horsemen. These elite American troops. Two BARs and a bazooka. They get the commando trait. They'll be able to seal the deal started by the first SSB. So yeah, 18 to 8 as we carry on trying to get into a better defensive position on this left hand side so we can hold back these Hermann Göring Pioneer MP44s. These are another really, really nasty squad, but at range you can see how effective the airborne paras really are. 10 man sniper squads, you can't go wrong. Two more forcemen, BARs coming in, the mortars ready to fire away once again, this time focusing on the pack 40 and you might have seen some of our opponents starting to surrender as things are looking bleak for them as we continue to secure these flags bow fighter coming in now and a sea fire to boot be flying overhead looking for the stug kills as the sea fire providing me with the recon that I need to make sure that this bow fighter gets on target <laughs> sorry about the camera there <laughs> unfortunately what ended up actually happening is my bow fighter turned the wrong way <laughs> when I tried to give it a strike the bow fighters they are absolutely fantastic because they are incredibly resilient and what that means is they almost always get their rocket strike off and that's super important because then they can find value 
In this case, 140 point bow fighter looking for an 80 point stig or something is going to need to complete a couple strikes in order to get value. But honestly, if we can get these stigs out of the way, it will be nice in the long run for our troops, particularly our forcemen, that are going to struggle to kill them from range. So second bow fighter coming around. You see they turn like an absolute truck. So not able to get on target in time. 19 to 7 now as this map as this flag is secured I destroyed <laughs> destroyed the pack 40 <laughs> Nathan making me chuckle with that comment but uh, yeah Forceman killing off the rest of the Hermann Göring Pioneer we're killing off the Schutzen my bow fighter still looking for a target or it's rockets the second one that is And the sea fire all the while providing us with juicy recon. Did manage to mortar the mobile wagon back here. That was a good kill. But here comes the bow fighter looking for that fresh Panzer IV. Does not find the kill. Rather disappointingly. It's actually very rare that the uh, bow fighters don't kill because they're flying quite slow. They're able to get all of their rockets on target and generally they are relatively accurate. They don't need to like land a few rockets in order to find a kill onto a medium. But this time around we are let down. We've also got the Black Widow flying around now. This is such a cool aircraft. Very, very good at strafing. That's Endymion's SSB there going to work. And yeah, the Sherman 2s now coming in to secure. These are the non-amphibious variants. So, have rolled up the road. Coming in to yeah, secure that town on the left-hand side. Our team continuing to push on through, but... <laughs> always got to remember the amphibious push that started it all on this left-hand side. Again, really not something that you see very often. And when you do, it's very rare that it's successful. So to get both a successful like a success and it being amphibious and very, very, very cool. Another Black Widow coming in there for the strafing run. Forceman going to try and take advantage of the light cover here in order to push up. I'm going to need to use the light cover to get ground because the Stug and the Panzer IV kind of covering the open. At this range, I should be able to do a lot of damage to the Schutz and look how quickly they get pinned down by the Forcemen. That commando trait, the 10 M1 Garands and the 2 VARs absolutely mincing that squad of Schutz and Forcemen are incredibly strong particularly against units that aren't utilizing shock trait or any other trait for that matter. The Schutz and just getting again torn up there. German 2s trying their best to kill the Stug at range, that's not gonna work out too well for them. Meanwhile, mortars in the back here still firing away. This time actually targeting the Panzer IV in the light cover here as well as whatever else might be in that position. And you can very much get away with directly engaging tanks with those 107mm mortars. You can see that it did manage to secure the kill there. Definitely something that you should make use of if you have radio 107mm definitely definitely use them they are very very strong now the Sherman 5 looking for the engagement on the Panzer 4 fortunately not able to find the kill six pounder on the main road gets the job done meanwhile another bow fighter coming in over the water the nice thing about this is that the bow fighter actually has the correct <laughs> C camo painted on it and so bringing it over the lake like that is really really cool we're currently going in for the attack onto the Stug Bow fighter taking a lot of punishment Black Widow also coming in trying to get a strafing run onto the 88 at the same time these are very slow 
which does quite often cause them to get shot down. But in this case, you can just see how the resilience helps that stay alive. But now, with 10 seconds left on the clock with a double tick, or triple tick even, we have won the game. The team done <laughs> did very well <laughs> throughout this one. And, yeah. Very much thanks to the Amphibious Landing as well. So, 19 minutes, 48 seconds. Job done. And this wasn't really a match to show off, like, <laughs> a win, necessarily. This was really just to show off that amphibious play that, again, you really just don't see very often. Very, very fun game. It might have been extremely short. It would have been fun if it went a bit longer, of course. But <laughs> I had a lot of fun supporting that. Uh, it's a great job, right, and to be on. Unfortunately, ending up with a negative KD, but led the charge for the rest of us. Uh, myself getting a quite good KD, mainly thanks to the mortars. That's it. That's all there is to see. Thank you very much, guys, for watching the video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it, and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.